Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Deadfire with me, Break It Down. Let's speak with Tatok. Some ink must have leaked through Anik's skull if she thinks I'll stand idly by. Tatok mutters to himself as he presses a fine chisel into the scales of his armor, engraving runes one laborious curve at a time. Lean in for a better look at the engraving. The runes are in the Nasty Talk language, at least half of which spell out a litany of violent and colorful curses. The chisel goes askew and draws a harsh line across the iron. Tatok's eye twitches. Ah, there goes the rest of my day. What do you want, Outlander? Sparing you a glance, Tatok begins to fiercely buff the metal with the edge of his fist. What was that argument about? Our chieftain offered my collie to the drowned barrows. Tatok spits on his armor and rubs harder at the chisel mark. Nimnok accepted him. An honor to some, a tragedy to me. Tatok sighs and wipes his brow with the back of his hand. What's Nemnok? God of the island, a great terror of a being, but kind to us when we follow the rules. He shakes his chisel with a stone idol in the center of the village. A false god, you mean? He's not perfect, but he's our god, lass. Tatok sighs up at the idol. His likeness is the most any of us have seen. We only meet his ogre minions who guard the isle. The children we send, they face him in the mountain. He nods toward the northern horizon. So they've never seen Nemnok, which further reinforces my previous theory that he's just an imp. I've heard nothing about a new god. This might bear a closer look. Nimnok sure takes like a god. He demands readers, scribes, anyone handy with ink and quill. My Kali had the misfortune to be born clever. That's how grimaces to himself. You'd... Did you say you'd go to the Mountain of Power? Would you find my boy while you're there? Tatok pauses his work to blink at you. We send other tithes to the mountain as well. Gold, gems, items of power, if such things interest you. Tatok winks and clears his throat. Such things do interest me. If you can help me and help yourself in the process, so much the better. Tatok breathes a sigh of relief. Next time it'll be Nemnok who pays. Tatok chews his lower lip and sighs as he marches toward his hut. No god of mine steals a child. Tatok stops muttering when he sees you approach. I take it Kali hasn't returned. Nay, I hope he's smart enough to slip free of Nemnok's claws. Interesting set of armor you've got there. Junvik tradition. The names of friends and foes are engraved on its hide. He bangs on his chest, grinning broadly. Been with the tribe for generations. Good armor remembers. I don't think that matches up with what we deciphered earlier. When we inspected it, it said it was a litany of foul language, essentially. Uh, this is a handsome village. We work hard to keep it that way. Katok sighs and glances to each of the brick huts. Too hard at times. Farewell. I speak to Gable. Outsider, you come for food? The merchant squares her shoulders and folds her arms. Yes, show me what you have. As you wish. She nods stiffly and gestures to her wares. Nature's Embrace. So I think we have one of these already equipped on Facina. But just in case it is slightly different, I'll go ahead and read it. So it grants Grove's Kin 10% chance to grant the wearer and nearby allies wood skin when the wearer is critically hit. And all seasons. Plus 2 burn armor rating and plus 2 freeze armor rating. We're also going to buy it. The burn armor rating may come in handy later when we try the Hellfire Colossus again. Yeah, right. Oh, I didn't look at the rest of her wares. Outsider, as you wish.
Yeah, sure. All right. Last but not least, let's speak to Anik. Muttering in prayer, the tattooed chieftain scoops palmfuls of sand into a stout mound. He leans forward and blows on the mound hard enough to scatter it to the breeze. A smile spreads across her face as the breeze carries due north. I offer amends for the slight of Tatok, great one. A gift of breath and wind for his wasted words. She opens her arms and calls out to the northern horizon. Finally, she dusts off her palms and turns to you. Speak up, unless you're just resting your sea legs. She raises an eyebrow and nods. Study her face tattoos. The ink outlines a complex maze from her jaw to her brow. You get a little dizzy just from peering closer. Neek smiles as she takes notes of your interest. When I was born, the holy woman told my mother these markings would bring me luck. So far, they bring only more questions. But is that not the nature of faith? He chuckles to herself. What's a tribe of boreal dwarves doing in the Deadfire? Thriving, my outlander friend. Her lips part, showing strong teeth. The elders of my youth told stories of those who crossed the sea by a great land bridge. Now, I tell them to my children. The gods opened a path for us, and we trudged forward, spurred by inviting whispers carried over the horizon. She nods toward the mountain in the north. We followed prophecy until we found mighty Nemnok, who gives us safety, security, and a future. She lets out a breath and smiles. You and Tatak were arguing about Kali. Kali joined mighty Nemnok in the drowned barrows, against the wishes of his infidel father. Anik folds her arms and glances over your shoulder. Nemnok does Kali great honor. Tatok is a fool to think otherwise. I hear that Nemnok is your god. Nemnok is the god of this island and patron of our tribe. Anik crosses her arms over her chest. Nemnok gives life and safety to all Junvik. To feed the barrows with sacrifice is to feed our prosperity. Why did Nemnok take your tribesmen? It is not for me to question the will of a god, nor is it any business of yours. It is actually kind of my entire business. She furrows her brow and pins you with a warning glance. Kali was blessed to be taken. May we all be as clever and beloved as he. Earlier you mentioned something about Nemnok's accord. In exchange for our obedience to Nemnok's laws, the Mighty One guarantees our safety and plenty. She claps her hand over her heart and bows to the north. One day, all of the Deadfire will accept Nemnok's accord. Back to my other questions. Speak on then. She sighs and waves you on. Farewell. Alright, let's go check out Captain Henqua's treasure before we go to the Drowned Barrows. Alright, let's have to go back through Junvik Village to get to it. The area seems unremarkable, but for a set of large rocks placed in a triangular formation. You compare the barren desert pass with the notations and landmarks of Captain Henqua's map. This is the site of his buried treasure. You dig at this spot until your shovel hits a bag of coins, bursting it at the seams. Kneeling to gather up armloads of riches, you spot the corner of a buried chest. You dig faster and pry, the op pry open the chest. Excuse me. A fortune in jewels and good sp uh, spark on the light.
Money, money. Emerald, black pearl, ruby. Magnaris chain. So it starts at superb. It grants blade biting. Plus 5% recovery time on attacker. Stacks three times for 20 seconds when critically hit with melee weapons. And riveted links plus two pierce armor rating. I'll look at it in the inventory since we can't look at the upgrades yet. The outlaw hero Magnera Free Trader wore the suit of mail when she mounted her legendary assault on the prison in Hell's Gate to rescue her imprisoned husband from the clutches of a corrupt Deerwooden bailiff. Magnera faced the entirety of the prison garrison, fighting her way from the gates to the dungeon tower where the bailiff himself stood between her and her husband's cell. The two engaged in a ferocious duel of sabers. The warden, though skilled, was no match for Magnera. His many glancing blows failed to penetrate her chainmail. He could do nothing more than curse the outlaw's name as she cut him down. Don't sabers just do slashing damage? I feel like the uh, weapon of choice in the story doesn't make as much sense against the armor. Alright, Magnera's commitment. Plus 10 fortitude and plus 10 will. And staunch. Resistance to might afflictions. Outlaw's instincts. Plus 10 reflex and plus 10, or plus 10. Plus 5 deflection against ranged attacks. And padded underlayer. Yeah, plus 2 crush armor rating. Still no slash. Let me check. Maybe I'm wrong in the... Sabres also do piercing. Nope, just slashing. Okay. Can you click on the village? <laughs> A mountain commands the northern horizon, its cliff face the likeness of a rotted skull. Scavenger birds circle high above its peak in a morbid halo. Go north. As you approach the base of the mountain, the beating of drums reverberates from the skull's gaping mouth and vacant eye sockets. Oh, um... Climb up to the eyes. Give me an awful lot of choices. Uh, pitted rocks offer enough hand and footholds to climb as high as the bridge of the nose. The reverberation of drums shakes free an occasional pebble. Uh, I climb to the left eye. You make your way to the ledge of the orbital socket. A sharp drop leads down to the cavity of the skull. Lights twinkle in the shadows below, and voices echo up from an unseen source. It would take the right tools or an agile fall to make your way down. Jump down into the eye. Your landing is a hard one. A snap of bone and an indrawn breath from Jody echo in the darkness. As you pause to survey your surroundings, the oppressive beating of the drums throbs in your ears. Look promising. What's this? I already told those Aeots and Clods were at capacity for scribes and acolytes. Those incessant drums have beaten our guards senseless. A robed acolyte curls his lip and advances on you with a look of frank appraisal. We aren't accepting new recruits. Now go! Our progress wallows as you degrade the left eye with your presence. He makes a shooing gesture. 
I'm looking for Kali. The new boy. Nemnok fawns over him in the lower sanctum. Anuk grimaces toward the exit. Only acolytes, ogres, and naga go down there, and any of them would chew you to pieces. His smirk grows wider still, flashing a hint of teeth. You couldn't see it in your heart to let me through. What spasm of unreason compels you to ask this? No. I'll be off then. Farewell. Seeing as Nemnok hates unexpected company, let me summon an escort. Nuke winks and snaps both of his fingers at once. Well, I didn't want to fight you. But so be it. I bring your end. Sorry, friend. Can't. The next. There, you've got it, buddy. Yeah. Time to separate the chaff. Finally. Uh. Right on target. What do you need? Yeah. Let's go. Something I can do. Oh, a pretty yeah, good fight right between a bunch of scriveners. On it. Someone has painstakingly annotated these scrolls of arcane lore with pronunciation guides. Nuke's memo. One of those Aetan Clods accidentally kicked the switch to the Master's private storage room and nearly snapped it off the wall. It is the sacred duty of playing drums and wandering the hall so boring they have to dismantle our home brick by brick. I took the liberty of pushing some barrels of lamp oil up against the switch. At least anyone who kicks those won't live to regret it. None of you should need to enter the storage room, but I want no delays if the Master calls for his favorite cloak. I've got it. Soon to be my favorite cloak. So we could have entered here peacefully, uh, based off the looting of the tables being considered stealing. 
Yeah. I'm still using the axe. Uh, yeah, I'll turn on bleeding cut. Huh? Sure. Some more damage over time. Looks like trouble. Take him down. It's weak to crush damage, though. So swap to this. That looks complicated. Do it right there then. Yeah. How's that not hitting the Aeton? Half his body's in that. Adair, <laughs> what did they do to you, buddy? <laughs> Love uh -uh, it didn't work. That looks complicated. <laughs> Oh good, he got better. Oh. <laughs> That's weird, why couldn't we move forward? <laughs> Not in my area of expertise. I love lies. Tell me. Oh, sorry guys. I was thinking maybe we could save all these guys from Demnock, but suppose not. A note on the forge. Let this serve as a general reminder that the Flame Naga are sensitive to disruption. We must venture downstairs. Try and give Forge Master Tithus a wide berth while she's at work. Many of her staff have not enjoyed favorable encounters with Kith in the past, and use the forge as a kind of creative outlet. <laughs> So let's all do our part to keep them comfortable, hmm? Acolyte Canook. Ready to brawl? Great. Seal is me. I bring your end. Too tall. Stay behind me. All set. We're in No good. How may I help? Nice, bobbing spells. A nice choke point here. The main character has stopped attacking. That was about as useful as a bump on a pickle. Come now, stepping off that word. No, I cannot do that. Take him down. I bring your end. 
Alright, mess him up. Also, this fear effect lasts a long time. I'm really glad I grabbed that spell. So, I can second guess myself initially. I bring your idiot. Plenty of guards. The occasional sulfur, sulfur bubble pops on the surface of this warm pool. Oh, that smells great. Oh, I found a trap. Okay. Well, good news is they don't die at three wounds. Assuming at four is when they they drop dead. We're gonna rest up. I only have three eggs. I'm trying to buy up as much food as I can, and we still can not craft as much as I would like. So we already have made. Everybody gets cup of tea. Keeping an eye out. Crap right here. We can't spot that? Aye, of course. We can disarm it. Oh? Yes, yeah, so let's take it more slowly through here since we stumbled across two traps already. Alright, so that's the other eye. call it here uh, next time we'll continue exploring the drowned barrows we'll start we'll finish the upper floor and then head down and see if we can't find Nemnok and his cloak of course either way for now thanks for watching hope to see you guys in the next one